What's up, guys? I know we got an assignment coming up. It's it's due tomorrow if you want to time date this this video. So I want to have the opportunity to give you some feedback, maybe some some support to help you answer these questions. And of course, remind you that I have put links to all of the Desmos graphs that I'm creating here. They're, they're not really well organized, but they're definitely there in the Google Classroom assignment. Uh, question one, a fitness company is selling DVDs and they're able to determine their profit like, like formula according to this quadratic, 11.5x uh, minus 0.1x squared subtracted by 150. Use what's there in Desmos and, and even like go, go to open up those links just to kind of get an idea of, of how you can manipulate it. You can change some of the numbers and, and tweak with things and, and then uh, explore why that number is there, what it has information to help you about. The question from the homework assignment does ask you to talk about the characteristics of functions. And so uh, as you're answering those questions and, and you're filling them out, maybe you want to include uh, a picture of the screenshot or the link to what you did in Desmos. And if you click that little share button with the little arrow popping out of it, pretty universal symbol for share or copy like so you can put another document, use that. Uh, copy the link or even download the, the, the graph and upload that graph into Google Docs. It's a skill you should have. Number two says the park safe commuter lot charges different uh, rates depending on the number of days or hours a car is parked. Hours is the key thing during the next five days. Uh, this notation is the way that you do a piecewise function in Desmos really, really like like code heavy stuff. So Google it or slow this video down and watch it slowly step by step so that you can see how the function for number two lines up with what got typed into Desmos. Of course, you can always do that. You can always just, you know, skip to the end or or slowly scrub through the video so you can find out where it is that you're looking for. But once you graph it, then talk about the characteristics. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Question three. Sherry is going to put $500 into an account that charges or, or earns her 3% interest rate compounded annually. And this is a formula for us to know we're going to talk about this year. All of these functions are things we're going to talk about between now and June. But the key thing here is that a, a compound interest formula, you have your initial amount, 500. You have your growth rate, like a percentage, like 3%. Why is the one there? I'll tell you about that, but not now. Uh, so you write all that in, you get that graph, and then we want to mess with the wrench. So Desmos is really powerful, and it's really simplistic to use compared to maybe you know, the TI-84 or TI-Inspire. Love those calculators. Really good with them. But Desmos is the best. Uh, when you click the wrench, you can mess with the intervals in order to get the graph to kind of like position on the right quadrant or spread out and spread up, you know, enough. Um, but there it is. Uh, this function is called an exponential. So maybe what you're going to do for this assignment is you're going to write your answers down. You have to define the function family. It's exponential. You have to say if it's an increasing or decreasing or a combination of increasing and decreasing functions. Does that mean there's a maximum or a minimum? In this case, no. And then last of all, is it a smooth curve? And so this is a smooth curve because your money trickles up, you know, pennies to dollars at a time. And, um, that for that reason it's it's a smooth curve this is probably the last question i don't think i put question five on here but the link is in your google classroom assignment you can go check it out uh the thing i wanted to show you is that i'm really going to rely on the wrench in this question because it's tough to see what the y-intercept is but if you notice this function s of x uh, looks a lot like y equals mx plus b and i'm counting on your knowledge from middle school or last year or previous classes to actually be like, oh yeah, spark that memory, y equals mx plus b, that's the slope intercept formula. Look at those wrench settings. It goes from, in the x interval, from zero to 10. And in the y interval, it goes from zero to 20,000. I wonder why it goes up to 20,000. Interesting, interesting. Well, anyway, for something you to think about, right? Like, why would we want to think about 20,000? Or how do we even come up with those numbers to use? Some of it's going to be guess and check. And as you guess it and check it, you might come up with the answer that you need to know. Make sure you define the function family. This is linear. Make sure you talk about if it's an increasing, decreasing combo function. It's actually decreasing from left to right. It's going down. Uh, maybe within this interval, just because of the way the context of the problem is, that this function has an absolute max at 20,000 and an absolute minimum at, at zero. Where those occur also matters. Did you graph it? Did you plug it into Desmos and graph it? Is that graph recorded in you know, your Google Doc, your answer? 
Okay, bonus content, bonus content right here. We're talking the review question. Um, an axis of symmetry in a parabola, it's the middle. It's the line straight up and down. For this one, it looks like around x equals 0.5, x equals 0.75. This graph, graph number one, passes through all four quadrants. And so we use Roman numerals for, I don't know how to do an IV, but for four. But like uh, the point is we use Roman numerals for those. That's all I'm gonna share with you for now for this assignment. Uh, please give it a shot. Give me a message if things are, are still struggling for you. Um, you know, no one walks this road alone, so make sure that you reach out for some help. Thanks for watching this video, and of course, see me in some of the other ones. Bye.